So we let those dry and then we've got our skull mold. This is a pretty big one. Um, don't want to get bigger than this. This is a pretty good size for the bubble that I'm using. It all depends on how big you make your balloon. But this is three inches. It's like two and a quarter by three inches long. Um, and that's mostly, you know, mostly what we care about is the, is the, uh, the depth here, the width and the, and the depth of his skull, which is, it's uh, almost two inches. And again, he's two, she's two, he's two and a quarter, or she's two and a quarter across, because that's got to fit into your ball into your gelatin ball that you're gonna make. Okay, so keep that in mind. But what I did is I just took this fondant, again, the modified fondant, or if you've got gum paste, you can use that. Roll it into a nice ball and press it in. Now, I'm not filling this entire cavity, okay? Didn't fill the entire thing. Okay, so I filled the front of it. And then I use a skewer. And we're gonna, well, we're gonna pop it out. It's nice, because I can actually use my hands to pop it out here. Kind of shape this so it, looks, it doesn't look like his head was caved in. And we're gonna kind of make a back to it. Just the back half. The back half that goes right here. Just gonna shape it with my hands. It goes right there. It's okay that we've got a seam, it's gonna be dark. Okay, make sure we didn't lose anything here. And I'm also going to fill in the top of his head there. an old decrepit skull. It's okay. But you can fill it. If you've got a 3D mold, then by all means use it. But I don't have one, so I'm just, you know, going to use some shortening to smooth it out. It'll be fine. Okay, so we got his skull, and then I need the skewer. So I'm going to put the skewer in just like so at an angle. Okay, and then I need to let that dry. And that's gonna take a while to dry, so you probably should give this about two days, depending on the weather. Okay, if it's really humid, give it more, but give it a good two days, that's a solid piece. Okay, and we're gonna cut this. It's not gonna be that long, not gonna remain that long. And I usually put this in a piece of foam so it doesn't flatten when it dries. I mean, if it flattens, it's okay, you know? But you can't stand it up like this because what will happen is the weight of this will go right down the skewer and the skewer will end up poking out the top of it. So you cannot stand it up like that to dry. Okay, it's got to be laid down. And if you want, you can actually lay it in the mold, wherever I put it, there we go. You can actually lay it like that and let it dry. That way, you know, the face won't dry, but everything else will. And then once this is dry, then you can lay it on the back and let that dry. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And then what you'll eventually have is a skull. See, I did this one a little, a little more carefully. I just did two pieces, but get the general idea. I played around with the back of it a little bit more. Okay, and then I painted this. So once this came out, oops, I actually dusted it. So I have a little bit of black petal dust. A little itty bitty brush and I dusted just a little bit in the eyes not too much okay and then a little bit in the in the creases of the teeth so you can see it and a little bit on the temples here A little bit on the eyebrows there. So he looks a little in the nose there. Just so he looks a little on the cheeks. Kind of creepy-ish. Okay, and then one other thing I did is I have the glow-in-the-dark powder. And I notice 
Chef Rubber is now selling this. Um, there's a couple of people that have it. It's a non-toxic powder. I don't expect anyone to eat this, cult, this skull. It's actually glow in the dark. I got it online, but um, you just dip your brush in and you just dust. And it's light activated, so what you do is you're going to, you could actually paint it with alcohol too, but it's better if you dust. You can actually uh, pour, put this underneath a bright light, you know, fluorescent, one of, the, one of your light bulbs and then um, it'll glow for, for so long, depending on how much you charged up the powder. This is the green powder and it glows for quite a while, so charge it up, you know, before you're gonna put your cake together and serve it. Okay, so we put it in last, so that's what this is. This is just glow-in-the-dark powder. Like I said, it's non-toxic, but I wouldn't, you know, if I wouldn't put on something someone's gonna eat. And this is hard as a, a rock. You better not eat it. <laughs> Break a tooth. You'll have more problems if they eat that than a little bit of powder. Okay.